All right, welcome to the 5D Academy of Higher Consciousness. I'm Zarathustra, broadcasting live from Tulum, Mexico. Today, we're going to be talking about the importance of playfulness and joy. Well, what we're going to do first is we're going to do a meditation, as always. This is a silent meditation. We're just going to, I'm going to ask you to take a deep breath and relax into this moment. Just kind of sink inside yourself. And let go of all your concerns and your troubles and whatever is going on in the world. Let those things go and sink within yourself. Just take your attention inwards and give yourself a chance to relax into this moment without any stories. So this is your time. And it's an opportunity to go inwards, to disconnect from the world outside and dive within. All right, so take a deep breath. And let yourself fall into the state of meditation without trying. Don't push yourself. Just allow it to come to you.
slowly, slowly come back. Ooh. So here we are again, once again. And um, it's like the um, miracle of life that the academy is happening it's very good because this is the end of the year and um, we want to put everything in perspective not taking anything for granted so our academy is very dear to all of us and we all come together, but it's not guaranteed that it's always going to be there. Like in past few weeks, there's been, it's been on and off. So everything is in this moment. It's all momentarily. And we have a tendency to forget about that. And we naturally, we get complacent and we think that something has to be there all the time or it's going to be there all the time. But that's not how it is. Because life, in so many ways, always uh, shows us that you don't take things for granted. You, and, you know, especially with your relationships, with the people around you, uh, your loved ones, friends, family, and not go into this headspace that, oh, they're always going to be there. And, um, and we can see it around the world in life right now, how things are. Like, we used to have certain kind of freedom, and that freedom is taken away. And like very simple things, like the freedom to go in a restaurant sit down, order some food, and um, sit with your friends, laugh, enjoy, and, and then go home. And, uh, and we saw that ever since the uh, introduction of COVID-19, that freedom was taken away. And uh, now when you get a chance to go in a restaurant and sit with your friends and and have a meal, you realize, oh, wow, my God, this is like, you're so excited that you can do that, which is a very, before it was just, you wouldn't even think about it. Nobody would think about it. Like, this is a blessing to go inside in a restaurant to sit there and be served, and you don't have to wear a mask, and you don't have to do any jumping jacks. So, if we use, uh, we look at that and look at our own lives, goals, all our desires, wishes, where we want to get to, we also realize that a lot of us, a lot of spiritual people, at least that's my experience and my observation of a lot of people on the path uh, that they're in the quest of self-realization, in the quest of reaching ultimate goal of merging in with divine consciousness or finding ultimate happiness, is they have lost their joy and they're not having fun 
people become very serious and uh, life becomes extremely serious with them. They get very much involved with whatever is going on and uh, we forget ha about having fun, having, being bright, being easy, being light and laugh, dance and crack some jokes, not taking things seriously all the time. Because at the end of the day, the, the uh, reality of life is life pulls a lot of jokes on us. And uh, the whole thing, we take it very seriously. But life has a tendency to always create situations that if you are not um, it, it forces you to kind of be easy with it because you don't always get what you want things are not always going to go the way you want them to go as we can see what's going on in the world right now you're not always going to end up with the person you want to be. And life is going to do its own thing. So it's up to us to develop a sense of humor and have fun with it and not take things too seriously and take things light, lightly at times. Sometimes you have to get serious about stuff. But generally, it's important that you are celebrating life, enjoying moments of your life. And I'm not saying that every moment of life is enjoyable because it's got its ups and downs and there is tension and there sometimes you're going through pain or struggle or heartbreak or whatever. But still, to be able to not take all of it too seriously. Create a situation for yourself that you can have fun. You know, play some music and dance for five minutes, 10 minutes by yourself. Or laugh or watch some comedy or crack some jokes. You don't have to be serious all the time. At the end of the day, we're all gonna die and it doesn't matter. It won't make any difference. I mean, nobody cares. So if you're on this journey and who knows what's gonna happen or you're gonna come back or you're not gonna come back or whatever, but why not having some fun with it? Why not being playful and, and enjoy it rather than being so serious about it and always be caught up with all the stuff on the news and what's going on in the world or politics and uh, economy or, or gossip with family or stuff like that. Not getting really caught into that. Playfulness, being playful. Hi, Shadi from both Shadis from where is the other Shadi? She had to leave. Oh, there she is. Okay, one. Hi, Shadi. So, anybody has anything to share? To share with me or have any questions anything's going on it's we're coming to the end of the year you have anything to say
No? Nothing to say? I mean, if there's any time in life, I think right now, with the climate and what is going on in the world, it's more of an indication and an excuse to be playful and have fun while you can. Who knows? They may come up with a new law that you're not allowed to have fun either. You think that can happen? Like you're not allowed to laugh anymore because if you laugh, it's going to spread COVID or it's illegal. You have to be serious. Do you think that could pass? Like some countries pass a law that you're not allowed to laugh anymore. You have to be serious all the time. No, it's possible. It can happen. Did you ever think it's going to come to a point you're not allowed to go to a restaurant and sit down and eat? Or you can't go shopping on the street? Did you think that's going to happen? So what makes you think this other thing won't happen? I mean, that would be very boring if we come to this point in our lives that you're not allowed to have fun. You can't laugh anymore. You can't go to a comedy. You can't dance. You have to be serious and angry all the time. <laughs> Let's see. We got a message here. Let's see who's that. Oh, that's uh, Roshanak. How are you doing, Roshanak? You want to talk to me? No, I'm okay. Just uh, wanted to see you and uh, listen to you. And uh, the thing you mentioned, it's what's happening to Iran right now. No one is yeah. allowed to do anything. Like if they laugh, it's like they, they made a crime or something. <laughs> so right now, that's what's going on in Iran. If you laugh, they, they arrest you. Not they arrest you, but yeah, but uh, if you have uh, like a circle of, uh, like I saw something, it, it was a post in Instagram that people were laughing, they were doing, and a mullah came and they arrested them. Yeah, it's called that then. Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, it, it can, it can become like that. So it's a possibility. Yeah. So, so be grateful to be in the that part of the world. <laughs> yeah. So I mean there there who grew up in a family like had very strict parents and you weren't allowed to laugh or or have fun and you had to be serious. Anybody? No? Anita? Tell, tell us, tell us about your experience. I can't, you have to unmute yourself. Um, not always. Uh, my father was very funny, but um, my mother, she's always serious and she sees everything dark and she's also always very, very negative. And if we are small, my brother and I, and we used to laugh and make fun and nonsense, she she gets uh, very upset about us. And right. she's, or if you want to enjoy ourselves in the garden, enjoying the sun, she tells uh, life is not there to enjoy. These kind of things I hear all the time in my life. Right. So we grew up yeah. like that. Yeah. <clears throat> It's good. 
Thanks for sharing. Yeah, it's good to hear that because um, <clears throat> that's the story with a lot of people. And especially when you get into spiritual world and you start to go deeper and uh, you find a lot of serious people that it's all about meditation or it's all about the work. Nothing's about having fun, but life is different. Life doesn't care. I mean, life doesn't care if you're doing spiritual work or not. Life just happens. It just is. It simply is. And the night turns to day and day turns to night. It just keeps going on. It doesn't really care what you do or you agree with it or don't. How about the times that there's like jokes in life? The jokes of life. I remember I heard this, uh, I mean, does it ever like something happen in your life that it's kind of funny or you're, you're in a situation that all of a sudden you get embarrassed? Um, let's say, you know, you bought, this, you bought this juice. It's a green juice, right? And you're trying to open it up and you're wearing a nice white white uh, dress, you're, you're waiting, you're on a date, or you're waiting to meet somebody, or you don't know them very well, but it's important to you, and you want to be presentable, and uh, they bring you your juice, you're trying to open the juice, and all of a sudden, the top pops, and now you got green juice all over your shirt, and you didn't do anything. It was the pressure was built up there. And as soon as you opened it, it's just all over your face or all over your dress. You had something like this happen and you feel very embarrassed. It's like it's the jokes of life. Things like that. All right. Are you guys going to talk to me or I should just wrap this up and go home? Finally, after a few weeks, we're here and having an academy. Are you going to be with me or what? Come on, talk to me. Tell me. Candace, say something. Um, sure. I was just um, thinking about the day I was at Starbucks. I had called a meeting, a, a spiritual gathering about there were about six or eight people there and I was all dressed up and one of the ladies came in late and she leaned over to hug me and she had coffee in her hand and she spilled it all over me <laughs> right <laughs> yeah yes and I was embarrassed and upset you know yeah it's kind of like the joke of life isn't it yeah what if what about when you're wearing white and uh and uh, like it happened to me many times in my events or conferences or expos and uh, some lady wants to hug me and then all of a sudden she, she uh, her lipstick is all over my, my jacket or my shirt or I get makeup on my shirt and they didn't mean to, they didn't mean to do it, but you're just hugging and embracing your students and then they get makeup on you not the rest of the day like it's 10 in the morning and you have to go all the way till six <laughs> o'clock and all day you got makeup on your your jacket or your shirt what do you do about it you have to I'll laugh think. i'll tell you another story it's funny like this friend of mine he had a he died when he was like 68 years old uh, or yeah, something like that. But um, he was in love with this woman 
And the woman was in love with him for 30 years. So they had this love affair for 30 years, but there was a time that he was married and he wasn't available and she was single. And then when he was divorced, she was in a relationship. And they always like loved each other. And finally, they were in like early 60s that he was single and she was single. And finally, they happened to be in the same city or town. He was telling me this story and they come together and they're madly in love with each other. And as soon as this happens, three weeks after, she gets diagnosed with a brain tumor. And like three months after she dies. And he was telling me this story. Now, this is not a funny story, of course, but I'm saying that like 30 years, they had a crush on each other and they all wanted to be together. Finally, after 30 years, they're both single. And the moment they come together, two, three months after one of them dies. That's another joke of life. You know, it's like, finally, you got to the person you wanted to, but then they died. Things like that happen too. I kind of look at it like I have a tendency of not looking at it as life being mean. Of course, when you're in that moment and this happens to you, you don't feel like it's funny. But so many different times, like things happen in life that if you look at it, it's, it's like a joke. It's like life is pulling a joke on you in a way. And you can look, you can be serious about it or you can just laugh at it. But it's up to us, you know, it's just developing an attitude. I'm not saying being a joker all the time, but it's like, how do you want to look at it? How do you want to look at the events of life and how things go? Do you want to be serious about it all the time? Or you just want to have fun with it? You know, it's your life, basically. You're the one who's living it and experiencing it. So what do you want to do? But it is meant to be, isn't it? Yes, it's meant to be. Uh, and we're talking about meant to be with what? The joke of life or meant to be with... No, what happens to us? Experience to and falling in love and, and separating. and It's all planned before we are born. Yeah. So it, it's meant to be. Yeah, it's meant to be. That's true. Mm. But how do you want to look at it? Mm. You, you want to look at it like life is mean and is doing it to punish you? Or you want to just look at it as the joke of life? Mm -hmm. Is the way life is. Mm -hmm. It doesn't always make sense. Mm -hmm. Injustice. Injust you want to look at it as injustice. Yeah. And meant to be. And what? Meant to be. Yeah, that's one way of looking at it. Yeah. It's meant to be and it's injustice.
It's all perspectives. How am I going to look at something? Am I looking at it from this angle? I'm looking at it from this angle. I'm looking at it from the top. Do you ever climb, have you, or have you ever climbed to the top of a mountain or a hill or hiking? You know, you go hiking. Anybody? Yeah, you've hiked. Okay. And, you know, the higher you go when you're hiking, and of course, you're no longer in a city, you're out of the city or, and, and then finally you get to the top and you're kind of looking down. And it's like all of your problems or issues they kind of disappear because you're in the nature. You're far, far away from the city. You're in this quiet, beautiful space. And then uh, your pity, pity problems seem like they disappear. They, they lose their importance. And then, you know, we go back down and we go back to the city and we go back to our lives and then problems come back, little stuff come back. Or you go on a trip, you go to, Mari, do you like to go to um, Canary Islands, right? You haven't been there for a while, but you used to go there. Yes. Are you still going there? Can you go there or no? No, or they no. shut it down. No, no more. Uh, some people have been there, but they have to wear a mask, mask on the beach, and there's uh, there's no point. <laughs> they have to wear a mask when they go there. Yeah. Okay. So, so anyway, but I'm... when you go there, back back in the day before the whole thing started, it. And when you go there, you feel really good, don't you? You know, really, when you went there? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Or, and what, what makes you feel good? What is it about Can um, Canary Islands that you like? Well, for a Norwegian, it is the, the climate. It's warm. It's warm? Yeah, it's not Mex Mexico warm, but some... Uh, it's warmer. Mm -hmm. Is it beautiful? It's uh, surreal? Yes, beaches so, and palms, and we think palm trees is so exotic, very exotic to us. Right, and so it's exotic, it's, it just, it brings peace for you, right? Yes, it does. You feel very peaceful. Absolutely. Right, and then you come back home, and then what happens? Longing back, longing to go back. You you come back home and then all you think about is to go back. Well, it passes away, but uh... right. So you go you go on a trip, you go somewhere on a journey in the nature, skiing or whatever it is, and your heart opens up, and your mind is not very active anymore. So joy comes back. Yes, you can You're say it's very good. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yeah. So nature does that to us. And just relaxation. Relaxation. And if you, if you want, you can go climbing and go walking for hours on, on the beaches and uh, go to cities. Uh, no? Yeah, I got it. So I'm looking forward to doing it again. Yes, absolutely. Everybody should do it. Yes. <clears throat> if they like nature. So, yes. Yeah, so there's a sense of joy comes back. Sense of playfulness arises again within ourselves. 
from going to nature, going somewhere that it's like a vacation. Playfulness comes back. <clears throat> So the joy and playfulness, it's there. I mean, when we were kids, we weren't too serious. Most of the time, what we did was we played. We were being playful. We were being light. We were being, you just want to play. You don't, you don't want to be too serious about anything. I mean, you don't even know what it's like to be serious. It's just playtime. And then as we get older, we get conditioned and we get ten tainted and we get serious. And everything changes. So I invite you to come back to your child bring the child within out of you and since it's holidays and people come together and celebrate uh, it's a good time to take the serious mask off and be, be playful have some fun allow yourself to have some fun I have relatives that I tell them, hey, you know, you want me to play a little bit of music here for you? And we dance and they say, what are you talking about? The world is in chaos. We can't have fun. Or, or we're not teenagers or we're not in our 20s anymore. I go, well, you don't have to be in your 20s or a teenager to dance. Actually, I was talking to an old friend of mine yesterday, and uh, I was telling him, yeah, past week, I haven't been feeling very good. I've been kind of like no energy. So most nights I'm, I'm home around 7, 8 o'clock at night. I'm in bed, and I don't really want to go out. And he says, what are you doing? You go clubbing all the time? I go, I don't go clubbing. I like electronic music. And, uh, and there's a lot of good music here. So I like to go, I like to go listen. I like to go dancing. You can call it clubbing, whatever. And he said, you still like to do that? I said, I'm going to be dancing till the last day of my life. Actually, one of the conditions of anybody wants to come to my funeral is they have to dance on my grave. Or don't come. You're not allowed to, to cry. You have to come there and bring your best drink. Have a drink. And dance on my grave. That's how I like it to be. Nothing serious. No crying. None of that stuff. So yeah, I like to dance. I love dancing. Right. So what's up with you, Karen? You've been smiling the whole time. Why are you smiling? You can unmute yourself, huh? Yeah, yeah, now I, I found out because I couldn't connect my computer, so that's why I'm on my phone. Uh, it, it, why I'm smiling all the time because I'm in this uh, I'm in this uh, period where, where I'm having fun all the time and I'm laughing about everything. <laughs> well, that's becoming illegal. You can't have fun anymore. Yeah, but I'm having fun all the time right now, oh, so yeah. it's okay. okay. All right. <clears throat> there must be something wrong with you if you're having fun all the time. 
Yes, there's definitely something wrong with me. I we're know gonna, that. We're going we're gonna to have to take you to a doctor. Yeah, yeah, I'm crazy, you know. I'm crazy, yeah. Well, we knew, we knew that part. Yeah. How are you doing, Dwight? Are you in Arizona? Nice to see you. I can't hear you. Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. I'm in, I'm in Arizona, actually driving right now, but. Yeah, where, in, where in Arizona are you at? Uh, Chandler. Greater Phoenix area. Okay. Uh, try to listen in when I'm able to, but right. Well, it's nice. It's nice having you. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Radhika Sharma, where, where are you from? Radhika Sharma. What country are you from? Hi, I'm from Toronto, Canada. Oh, you're from Toronto. Okay. Yeah, different time zone. Right. Well, you, we have two other people here from Canada, from Toronto, actually. So... Yeah, two, two, we have two Shadis. Shadi means happiness. Three Shadis? Oh, your mom. Okay, one of the Shadis says, oh, we have Roshanak and two other Shadis, all from Toronto by the time, uh, by, by the way. So you got some playmates there. Okay. Yeah. So, and uh, Radhika, Radhika is a Sanskrit name, isn't it? Yes. And how did you get your name? Uh, my parents gave it to me. <laughs> oh, okay. So your parents are, uh, are, are you Indian descent? Or yes. Did, oh, okay. All right. Yeah. I get it. And yeah. is this your first time at the academy or have you been with us before? I have joined in a couple other times. Okay. Well, welcome back. Thanks. We're going to try to keep it consistent from now on. So we will have an academy next week, by the way. Okay. So everybody knows. Well. All right. Lisbeth Akison. Is that, did I say it right? Akison? Akison? Where are you from, Lisbeth? That looks like a Swedish or Norwegian name. Is it Danish or? Danish. Oh, okay. Excuse me. Da Danish. I left that one out. We're in Denmark. What, what part of Denmark are you from, Lisbeth? Okay. Here, I guess you got muted. Well, welcome back. By the way, I have difficulties to find someone to dance with, so I'm having a I'm having a dance party here with myself all the time, and it's okay. uh, I'm having a lot of fun, so it's working. That's what's available, so that's what's happening. What What, what did you say in the beginning? You what? I have difficulties to find someone to dance with, right? right. Yeah. Yeah, the other day I visited a, a friend and we were dancing together, but everyone are, are busy with their working or family or whatever, right? So, yeah, yeah, I get it. I get it. Yeah. Well, keep up the good work. Yeah. Keep dancing. Yeah. That's my way. 
And how do I, how do I, okay. Right. Cool. Well, does anybody has a comment? Do you want to share anything with us? All right. Go for it, uh, Eva. Okay, I have a great experience of being uh, uh, serious all my life, from my was very little to for 20 years ago. What? Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't hear the first part. Okay, I'm very used to be serious. Okay. Uh, from very early age. And uh, about 20 years ago, uh, about so, uh, I realized I don't have to be introvert and serious. I can be, I can be joyful and uh, happy and uh, extrovert. That is nothing that uh, that says that I can't do. And since that I have uh, practiced because I had to practice because I didn't know how to do it. And uh, I think I'm very joyful and uh, nowadays. Um, Beautiful. Life, life yeah. is much, much better. <laughs> life is much, much better. And yeah. uh, uh, concerning the jokes of life, it can be very serious, of course. I have had uh, my partner has died and, and so on. But I really realized it is how it is. And it's not possible for me to do anything to, to change it. So why don't we happy and remember the good times and uh, make the best of my life? Beautiful. That was really, uh, uh, really I'm very happy to hear that. Thank you. Very, thanks for sharing. And I also want to to wish you a very, very happy new year, all of you. Thank you. Thank you, same to you.
It's nice to go deep in the unified field with all of you again. I want to wish you and your family and friends a wonderful coming new year and safe and have fun and be playful and enjoy your time. And I look forward to seeing you next year. I would like to thank you from us all for all your time and effort to keep our group together. Thank you very much. You're welcome.